Good afternoon. Today I want to show you how to install EPATS on your computer, how to install a test, and then how to practice using the computer testing system so that you are familiar with the tools when we take our FCAT reading test on the computer in April. Go to pearsonaccess.com forward slash FL and you will see a screen much like mine. You can read the how to install directions should you need them. But in order to install the launcher, you will click this link here, Install Launcher. Once you do that, it will ask you where you'd like to save it, and you can see that I've already installed it and I saved it to my desktop, so you'll want to, to do the same so that it's easy to find. You'll also need to install the practice tests. I have already installed the 10th grade practice reading test. I'm also going to install the ninth grade practice reading test for Windows and I'll just save that to my desktop as well. Now I'm going to go to my desktop and launch the EPAT system that I've already installed. I'm going to click here. If you are clicking EPAT for the first time on your home computer it will run through its installation. I'm going to use the 10th grade test to show you the tools and I'll just type my name here and select launch. The testing program resizes the window on the computer so you can't see the buttons that I see at the very bottom and I will just narrate as I go along doing the practice test. This tool window in the gray bar along the top stays the same no matter what you are doing so you will always see those tools along the top and the button at the bottom of the page says next or review here and I'll show you the other buttons in just a moment. So here's our first passage, the height of ingenuity and you will want to read the passage first or you might want to scroll down and read the passage with the questions. I'm going to show you reading the passage with the questions just so we can practice with the tools. This is my highlighter tool. Unfortunately, it only draws boxes and highlights them. It does not allow you to draw or write words in the margin. It does allow you to highlight the text. To erase the highlighter tool, I can click on the eraser and just click on the box and it will disappear. This is a notepad tool here and I could take notes here alongside the passage. However, these notes disappear the minute I go to my next section. So that might not be the most helpful tool for you to use. I'm going to leave it open so that you can see how it will disappear as we continue. So let me just read the beginning and then I'll do the first question just based on my initial reading to demonstrate the tools. The height of ingenuity. One of the less glamorous task builders face is designing things that people don't want to have around. Electri electrical substations, tunnel exhaust vents, sewage treatment plants, or cell phone antennas. One of the most difficult design challenges of contemporary life. Since the mid-1980s, almost 150,000 of these unlovely radio transmitters have sprung up around the country on poles along roadways and on the facades of buildings. The construction of new antennas grows at a steady rate of 12% a year. Meanwhile, communities have become even less willing to have them placed on their streets and in their backyards. So immediately I'm seeing that they're talking about uh, design challenges and how we have a need for cell phone towers, but communities are not willing to have them in their community or on their buildings. So I've just highlighted a few things to help me remember that. Now let's look at the first question. Even though I, I've not read the entire article for you, I can still demonstrate these tools. From reading the article, the reader can conclude that the work of designing unwanted structures is difficult and unrewarding, creatively challenging, easily accomplished, dull and unexciting. Well, I would certainly say it is not easily accomplished. 
So I'm going to click that and eliminate that answer choice. And it's not going to be a dull challenge either because the height of ingenuity, the title, suggests that people are being rather ingenious or smart about conquering this challenge. So I'm going to eliminate uh, answers D and A as well. And then I go back to my arrow tool here in the toolbar and I will select B. Now I'm going to click the next button and go on to the next question. According to the article, Grubb first became interested in turning a cell phone tower into a piece of art when he, and I've not continued to read, so I might just guess, when he accepted a commission for a design honoring flight. Well, we're talking about a cell phone tower, so I'm going to eliminate that. Realized a tower would make an attractive sculpture. That certainly could be, because sculpture is art. Heard about an award being offered for a creative design. That certainly could be. Learned of a tower planned near his proposed sculpture. Well, that could be too. So obviously I need to go back and read. I'm going to mark one answer choice for now, but I'm going to click the review button. When I click the review button at the bottom of my screen, it tells me, I'm trying to go and show you the buttons, it tells me that uh, when, I've, when I've clicked finish at the end, it shows me which questions I want to review. Let me see if I can minimize my toolbar down here. Oh, you saw it for a second. Let me bring it down again. Or up. Pardon me. Yes, that didn't make it any better. Let me solve this quickly. Okay. Well, I have moved that around, but my screencast window shifted. So here we go. Here's the go to button at the bottom. So I've marked this question for review and now I'm going to click go to. Go to takes me to the end of the test. I can see how many questions there are and I can see how many I might have marked review. When you are taking the test, don't spend too much time on a question that has you confused because you only have 70 minutes to complete the test. And you can see that in this practice, I have two passages to read and four questions for each passage. If you mark it review at the end, after you've clicked the go to button, you can click back and see the question you wanted to review. Once you make your definitive answer choice, you can unclick the review button. And when I go back to go to, you'll see that I've answered these but I've yet to answer the remaining questions um, in these passages. I'm not going to answer them right at this moment because I want to show you what happens at the end. You'll click Submit and it will tell you you've got some unanswered questions. <coughs> Pardon me. Are you sure that you want to submit your test? And we are going to submit it anyway for the moment. And then I click Yes and the test is now complete. You can close that window once you are finished. And that is how you use the EPAT system to familiarize yourself with the tools you'll be able to use when you take the FCAT reading test on the computer.